Hey, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to share with you tips on how I've been able to grow my income from 21,000 pesos per month to multiple six digits by the age of 30. Last week, I came across an article that highlighted how Filipinos need to earn 110,000 pesos per month in order to be happy. At this level, we reach happiness, and anything beyond that doesn't really add to us being happy. Money isn't everything in life, but having an income level that enables you to provide for yourself and for your family does provide a sense of comfort. With their average income levels nowhere close to 100,010 pesos per month, how many of us are actually going to reach this level and achieve happiness? It's tough, I know, and I've been there myself. It took me six years to reach the six-digit income level. But knowing what I know now, I know that you could definitely achieve it faster in life. So let's begin. The thing about the job market is, well, it's a market. As workers, we supply our time and our labor which are demanded by companies and organizations who then compensate us with money. The rate at which we are compensated is determined by many factors, from government regulations to the industries that we work in to the perceptions of our skills. Much to explain in this video, but it's led us to a point in time where our everyday farmer in the Philippines is earning way below the poverty line, whereas a senator is probably earning around 300,000 pesos per month. That's not to say a person who works in one job is more valuable than the one who works in another. All humans are equal regardless of their gender or state in life. If our farmers disappeared, we'd all go hungry. This just shows us the stark reality in life where some jobs are going to be paid 10 to 100 times more than others. At this point, you may be asking, which jobs pay high? Which jobs pay over 100,000 pesos every month? Now, I did cover that in one of my first ever videos, but that's not the point of today's video. I'm going to teach you how to fish so that you're fed for a lifetime. If you want to know what are the high paying jobs, you simply research online. And if you type on Google, here's one of the first things that will come out. This is great, but they're nowhere near six digits. They may not even apply to your field, and these are most likely representing averages. What we want to catch are outliers and above average positions. Something like this, 100,000 pesos over three years experience. Or something like this, 180,000 pesos for five years of experience. If you ask me, those rates aren't bad at all. And if you got those in the Philippines, you'd be living a pretty comfortable life. There are many websites which show you various jobs and their salary ranges. My personal favorites are Facebook and LinkedIn. Because most often than not, the ones who are posting these positions are the hiring managers or the interviewing HR. When you go to a job portal, you'll be competing with tens to hundreds of other applications. And then you have to go through several filters, such as an AI or a screening officer, before you finally get to the hiring manager. You can skip all these steps if you go through Facebook or LinkedIn because you can simply directly message the hiring manager or the author of the posts. Another thing that I've realized over the years is that if you want the money, you must follow the money. I'm not telling you to be obsessed with money. There's definitely more to life than that. What I'm trying to say here is those who are earning more are probably also the ones who can pay more. We know that our favorite boodle companies such as Shopee and your Lazada have been making a killing over the years and more so during the pandemic. Naturally, they are expanding and can afford to pay more as compared to your traditional players like your malls and your brick and mortar stores. Another example is when we compare multinational companies to local corporations. Multinational companies operate on a regional or global scale and are earning in a different currency. They can simply afford to pay us more because whatever they're paying us here is way less than what they're paying others abroad. Not just from a full-time employment perspective, but our freelancers also take great advantage of this. It's a win-win situation where foreign companies are able to save on cost, but our local talent are able to earn above local rates. By following the money, you put yourself in a situation to earn more. At this point, you may be wondering, finding all these high-paying jobs are great, you don't need to go abroad anymore to find good work. But how do you actually get into these jobs? In my view, if you want to get into a job, then the first thing that you need to do is to develop the skills that will make you qualified for this role. We discuss a lot about working on yourself and developing skills, but which skills do you actually focus on? I answer this in two ways. First, if you're researching and reviewing many positions, you'll eventually find out which skills are required to get into these roles. It may be technical skills, such as programming or certain languages, or they may be soft skills such as people management. While you don't need to be master of all these skills, you should at least be confident in some of them. The second way to identify which skills you'll be needing is to search for mentors or people you look up to. 
you can review the profiles and character of these mentors and idols to see how they've gotten to where they are at. If they're in your workplace, then go ahead and reach out and talk to them. Or if they're online on LinkedIn or in Facebook, you could send a connection request and try to chat them. By simply looking at the profiles of these people, you'll get a sense of what kind of persons and characters are needed for these roles. On a side note, if you look at the requirements of most of these highly rewarding and highly impacting roles, you'll find that they're not too picky when it comes to educational background. And I believe we're entering that phase where companies no longer care where you came from as long as you can get the job done. On to my last point, if you'd like to get into these types of roles, then one of the things that you must do is to not compete. What the heck do I mean by not compete? A typical application goes like this. You find a role, you apply to it along with tens of hundreds of others, and then you go to the interviews, and you're competing really with all these people to get that job. As I explained early on, you can skip this whole process by going directly and messaging the hiring managers. There's a second way to avoid all this competition, and that's by building your connections and keeping close ties with former workmates. You want to come to that point in your career where you don't apply for jobs. Jobs apply to you. For me, this is one of the best ways to get to work because someone is already vouching for you and the quality of work that you so don't compete. And those are the tips that I've used throughout my career to find these highly rewarding and highly impactful roles. I hope you've learned something today. If you do have questions, leave them in the comments below and I'd love to answer some of those questions. That's it. Please do like and subscribe and I'll see you next video.